So he's won awards for his role as Lucas in Spooks, as the Dwarf Prince Thor in Oakenshield in The Hobbit, and earlier this year, he had us on the edge of our seats as the lead role in the brilliant Netflix series The Stranger. Oh, I love The Stranger. Did you see it? I thought it was absolutely brilliant. He's brilliant in everything he does. I love Richard Armitage. Such a nice guy as well. But with the pandemic interrupting its sold-out West End run, Richard is part of an all-star cast bringing Chekhov's iconic play Uncle Vanya to our cinemas and homes as part of a brand new production. Well, ahead of today's show, I uh, spoke to Richard about the play and a bit about what it's like to be a stage actor in COVID Britain. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. It's an absolute honour to speak to you. Congratulations on a wonderful production. Thanks. Did you see it? I did. I did. Um, Amazing. I, I, if I describe my morning for you, I woke up um, with a slight whiskey hangover, pondering my place in the world, and then the first thing I did was open my laptop and watch Uncle Vanya. And uh, <laughs> I have to say, it was oh, quite... How was Vanya on a, on a hangover? That's probably like most of the characters in the play have a hangover, don't they? Well, well this is the thing. I found myself thinking this is quite life-affirming, because... I was reflecting how human experience hasn't really changed that much since 1897, and I just wondered, as an actor, whether Chekhov's understanding of human feelings it must appeal to you hugely. I think that's why actors go to Chekhov, and actually he wrote so few plays compared to other playwrights, but what he did do was really define how we approach character. Really, I mean, he worked with Stanislavski. It's the root of, of Western theatre and, and how we construct characters because he's focused on the lived experience rather than the plot so much. So most people kind of say, what's Chekhov about? And it's really hard to describe what it's about. But it's about human beings and how they how they bounce off each other, how they attract and how they repel. Is it completely mad for me to say that, that watching it, it was my first introduction to the play and my first introduction to Chekhov, I, I found myself thinking, well, this is almost like Big Brother. It's like watching a group of people related in various ways in a claustrophobic lockdown, getting on each other's nerves and digging into old wounds. And, and then I found myself thinking, well, this is so, this is so timely for the, the COVID world we're living in. Did that strike you? It's, uh, I mean, it, it, and I guess until we started to experience what lockdown was like, suddenly again the play took on a relevance. I mean, the last week of performing when the the sort of talk of the virus was was emerging, you know, in, in our world, and, you know, I'd been speaking these lines for 10 weeks uh, as the doctor talking about a pandemic and he's turned to drink and he can't deal with the trauma of losing patients and suddenly the relevance was was very high. But also in lockdown, I suddenly realised uh, now I understand what these characters have been going through. So the the chance to come back and and sort of bring all of that experience into the, you know, the restaging of the play for film was, uh, you know, it was really special to be able to do that. It was really moving at the beginning because you see your fabulous co-cast members returning to the theatre in face masks, uh, and it was quite easy to find yourself a bit choked. Was it a very emotional reunion? It was because I was not able to be there because <laughs> I'd just flown in from New York, like with with literally hours to spare before I had to lock down for two weeks quarantine. So I couldn't do that. I, I had to join a read through on a computer via a Zoom call. So I felt like I was being held back away from my friends and fellow actors, which was useful for the doctor, because when he comes back into that house, that's sort of what's been happening to him. But at every moment, there was something to hang on to in terms of the emotions and, and what we've all been through. The, the dialogue is so brilliantly natural, especially for me, a, a newbie to this world. And I, I think you describe yourself at the beginning, Dr. Astrov was feeling a bit wonky. And then we hear yeah. Toby Jones' Uncle Vanya complaining about various people wanging on. And it's brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's moments that make you giggle. And I just wondered how important you think these linguistic touches are to help the drama engage a new audience. Well, it's always going to be a translation because we're not performing in the original Russian. And, you know, that depends on which playwright decides to tackle it. And we were so lucky with Conor McPherson because there's a little bit of the Irish kind of glint in his eye that comes through that dialogue. Um, so these these little touches make it feel like we're just it's just us. It's not, you know, characters 100 years ago in a stuffy drawing room. It, these are these are it's us. You know, we're still the same and we're still dealing with the same problems. Um, weirdly, within the state of in the space of three months, those same problems seem to be sort of really prominent. And rather than watching people 
dealing with a pandemic and a collapsing environment and thinking, oh, that was an interesting history lesson. It feels like, oh, this is now. These are still things that we are having to, to sort of navigate right now. Whilst I've, I've read that you don't necessarily identify as a, a purely a method actor, you have talked in the past about how deeply you try to embody the characters you play. And I just wondered how difficult it was to come back after the break and once again put on the skin of the frequently despairing Dr. Astrov. Um, I came back with <laughs> a taste for vodka that I'd, that I'd maintained <laughs> from doing the play. Um, I came back with no haircut. So, uh, you know, I was, I was sort of, <laughs> it, I hadn't put him down really, to be honest. I, I, I thought about him a lot. And during the course of the research, I'd found this diary of a doctor who had worked through his life and through various epidemics and, and was really at, at the end of his tether as to what was the point of medicine and, I used a lot of of his references to to sort of try to understand what maybe our NHS workers were going through and still are going through. You know, how do you how do you go home at night after seeing people in such you know extreme circumstances without a cure? You know, that that's something that we find very difficult to get our heads around because there's always a pill for something. There's always a remedy, and these Russians were were dealing with tuberculosis for which there was no cure and typhoid and and having to you know having to to deal with the fact that m m most of the time they were death sentences and we we have lost that you know we 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 have quite luxurious existences compared to them so to to be living with something which people don't have answers has, has really shaken us up i think and, I, and that's contained in the play at the end of the production the the matriarch um and called marshall's nonna blows out the candles that light the stage and it and it felt to me as though she wasn't only putting the the, the play to bed she was almost putting theatre life to bed in some way until this bleak winter I is over. I just wondered how sad it is for you to see the way the arts are suffering in this pandemic. It is really, really sad. And, I, I you know, I, I've been able to carry on doing various kinds of work, but I, I know that there are a huge amount of people out there that work in those theatre buildings that only work in theatre that can't go back to work right now. But at the same time, you know, I'm I am an optimist. And so I look towards Sonia's speech about work and we will endure this and we will come back. You know, it might be the middle of next summer. Who knows? But I think when that we're all waiting to, to have those dust cloths pulled off us, you know, um, and we will see diamonds in the sky and it will it will come back to us. But in the meantime, we've just got to find a way to survive this period and most people that work in the arts do have ways of doing that because there are periods of time when you find yourself not working and you have to be very resourceful and I just hope people can hang on and and they'll they'll return when we all do. Richard Armitage, I'm not surprised the run was sold out. Uncle Vanya, my first experience of the play, my first experience of Chekhov, it was absolutely brilliant. I loved every minute of it. Um, I'm going to uh, get my uh, my wife's going to watch it this weekend and uh, I hope everyone takes the time to experience it and just thank you so much for being on the programme. Thank you for having me. And just let me say that it's the 27th of October and thereabouts for various screenings in, in your cinema. And, and, and going to the cinema is not a terrifying experience. I've done it. It's if you play by the rules, wear a mask. It's it's actually like a little bit of normality. Perhaps even sneak in a vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Ah, oh, Richard Armitage, such a legend, lovely guy to speak to. And I really recommend it. I'd, I'd heard of Uncle Vanya, and of course I've heard of Chekhov, but forgive me being a bit of a philistine, it's not something I've ever taken the time to investigate. It's really good. It's really funny, it's really fresh, it feels like a... It's not a history lesson, you know, it feels, as Richard said, like you're enjoying characters speaking to each other now and all the issues that they raise feel very current and contemporary i loved it um you can go to um, unclevanyacinema.com to find out where it's playing but it does certainly look like it. the odin in kettering and the savoy in corby will be showing it. 